So here we are in the village of Poi. Uh, there's the Rue du Rêve, a Dream Street. Uh, I don't know the history of where that name came from. We've been here maybe 15 years ago. We had been living in Paris before. We just wanted to get away from the big city, uh, out to the country. The street where we live is Rue de l'Ancienne Fontaine, the street of the old fountain, uh, which originally was here. That would have been the only watering point in the whole village. None of the villages had uh, sinks or <laughs> bathrooms or any of that. I don't know what happened to it, but they decided to rebuild another one to symbolically recall the importance of the fountain. And there's a big building up at the top that, that was the, there was actually a convent up in that building up there. It was a boarding school for girls, but that closed up before the war. It does feel a bit idyllic, the town, with all the stone, and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, is it a... Ah, uh, yeah, it's a nice, a nice place to be. Quality of life here is pretty good, and the local language here is uh, Occitan, and uh, everything is pierre or pierre, it's stone. You can see another doorway was, has been sealed up, and uh, it's just Lego brick, it's uh, Lego blocks to them. But in fact, uh, this, you can see this building was added on here. Uh, and you, if you look closely enough, you see that everything has been remodeled, re restructured. Over the, over the centuries. And everything is uh, basically made of stone and there's a lot of the local industry would be sheep for producing milk for the Rockefeller cheese industry. So I think there's actually more sheep than there are people <laughs> around here. So a lot of farming. And as you can see, we're on a kind of a, a natural promontory uh, overlooking the, what would have been the original valley of the Tarn. The river flowed on this side originally in the Middle Ages. So there was some sort of fortification up here there to defend this, uh, the whole village during, you're going back to the time of the Hundred Years' War, uh, 14th century, and this would have been, the town was actually the border, you had the, the English up there in Campeña, <laughs> uh, firing their, uh, down into here, this was the other side, and so they had a, they had a lot of uh, defence, uh, and they, they reckon the fortifications ran along here, there's a church up there. And the house where we are, that would actually have been the lord of the village who lived here because it occupied basically most of the street. And we live next, just right next door. This would have been the farmer's house, the narrow part. And there's a connection goes through there and where, he went, where the farmer went to work every day. There was wine cellars and all sorts of buildings in there. And when they sold up a few years ago, we decided to buy one of the wine cellars and to renovate it as a kind of a family room. This was originally was an arrow slit, it was only about this size. Uh, we extended it down to get a little bit more light in there. But yeah, that, that would have been the original. Well, the, as you can see by the thickness of the walls, you're, you're talking about a meter in thickness. So we're talking here, the, it goes down a little bit more here. You've got about a meter in thickness of a solid wall. So I think they made it pretty strong to support the rest of the building and here this was originally a window when we came here so uh, we decided to change the access from the other side uh, we opened the the wall up here to make a doorway in and so yeah so uh come on in. you can see we're underneath the the house so <laughs> this would have been like all the houses uh here everything made of stone wood was so rare so precious so hard to come by so everything was made of stone there's the kitchen up where we had a little bit of light <laughs> coming in from the kind of arrow slit window that we tried to extend a little bit. Uh, you can see from, I mean, how old it was all the, the work that went into that architecturally, so we didn't want to uh, touch that. All the houses around here are uh, full of these uh, stone vaulted uh, wine cellars, which were really practical for, <laughs> for stock in wine as well. We came in here, I mean, this was totally abandoned. Uh, the, the floor was like a meter lower. We just raised it up because of uh, evacuation purposes. Yeah, there was actually huge uh, pieces of the Le Foudre, the huge wine barrels. That, 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 there were three or four of them in here. We collected a couple of pieces of the wood just to make a, the base for the flower garden here. You can see that there's a curved bit of the wood that's a really old uh, oak wood. It gives you an idea of the size of the diameter of the barrel. I think they were about two meters in diameter, these barrels, yeah. So uh, this, here we are in the wine cellar. So when you came, it was abandoned? It was, yeah, uh, dirt on the floor, <laughs> clay earth. So then we decided, well, what do we do? We, we make it into a kind of a guest room. I 
and it, as we started measuring things out, it actually was a lot bigger than what it looked. So we, we ended up in, making it in the apartment. Me too. Mi pareja. You can see the original entrance into the house where the farmer came into work. I don't know how many cellars they have in there. At least half a dozen cellars uh, underneath the whole house. And the big one is down here, as you can see at the bottom of the hill, because they're trying to keep this, this uh, first floor level. And I'll, I'll show you the entrance through here. The original entrance, which we almost sealed up. But you can see the, the old stonework around there and the steps that started to go down there. So it's cellars all around the place. Here would have been the original doorway, if you can imagine, and the stone steps coming down into the cellar, which we kind of had separated in two, but so the door may have been about a meter wide. Uh, that came down here, so we raised the floor, and as I opened here, so you have the kitchen, living area here, and we have down here the bedroom, uh, a double bed, got in here just a bud, uh, we couldn't push the walls <laughs> anyway, and uh, again, we kept as much of the stone as we could here. Uh, the stone wasn't too nice on this side. We had, to, we had to cover it up, unfortunately. And the other problem was getting light in here because there, there was no windows, and getting through a meter of stone was feasible, but it was too much of a job. So we, we kind of made a compromise by making a kind of a, a panel through here. There we go. And so then you actually have a closet space in here. You yeah, you get just all your storage area, a few drawers and okay. shelves. Just what you need. So it's interesting because okay. you were mentioning that the stone here was bad. That was an issue. Yeah, the stone was, uh, there, there were uh, kind of hollows in it and there was bits that stuck out. It wasn't at all regular. It's impossible to tell what was here before or what was rebuilt. If you look at the traces of the wall, you can see that they, they built them up and, and, and remodeled them, like Lego kits almost in those days. Uh, if you look back up in this corner, you yeah, can see can. there's a big archway. So that obviously uh, was some kind of an opening or a door, and that came right down. So we didn't really want to have that in the middle of the bedroom, so that's why we, we drywalled up on that side. But it's, uh, <laughs> we wanted to keep what we could of it. We decided to keep as much of the vault as we could, but when <laughs> we had families coming along here with kids, they said, oh, can, can we go up there? So we decided to make it a little bit more secure and uh, put a, a ladder, make sure it doesn't slip, and the kids just go up there. That's their kind of a play area. Maybe I'm a bit on the tall side. You move around here on your knees, but... It's just, uh, as I said, it was originally just for the perspective, but no, it's a really cozy place to, to sleep. And uh, I sometimes tell people if you're going for an MR scan, maybe it's a good place to come and practice. You know? Do you, did you have to clean all this stone? Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty dirty and, and it was all rough, uh, a bit like some of the old stone around the village. It was just their wine cellar, so there was no real care went into the joints in between the stones. So that all had to be gutted out and clean, cleaned up and then re, uh, redone, we had to fill it back in again. Uh, I'm saying we, I started and then I called my friends, a few friends, they came and helped. They worked a, a lot faster than, than I would have done. Did you remove something here? Yeah, uh, this is, uh, I'll maybe come back down and show you because uh, there are a few different theories about uh, these wooden beams. Uh, normally beams run horizontal. These, these came down diagonally to about this height. Uh, you can see there was another one here. There was a third one here where the light was. And a uh, fourth one up here. So there, were, there was some sort of structure that ran across because there was holes in them. Some people think it was something to do with making their uh, charcuterie, their, with the, the pigs. Uh, that I originally thought maybe it was a hole, bringing the grapes down, bringing something. But no, 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 it was, it was, there was some sort of a structure in here. So, but uh, unfortunately, I arrived too late to find out exactly what it was. When we arrived here, there was obviously no water or electricity, so everything comes in under the doorway here. Both plumbing and electricity it runs along here and through the back, so you have pretty much an equipped kitchen. There was one technical problem with this hood here. You can, as you can see, uh, we had to make a hole through the wall to uh, get the evacuation through there. It was about 70 centimeters long. I uh, had to get a special machine to, to make the hole through there, coming out the other side. 
there are four or five different types of stone, but uh, we had to take out all the old uh, bits and pieces of grout or uh, the joint that was in there. So the, I mean, it was really deep. The stones are quite big. You can go back maybe as far as some of those stones maybe are 20, 30 centimeters thick. We just needed a couple of centimeters to, to go back there. And the, the cable runs along in there and then we just sealed it up again. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit fastidious, but better to have that than, than having some kind of a plastic box running along the outside. I like uh, this light unit. It's so simple. Yeah, it's just uh, there's a little bit of a support in it, the wall, but uh, just in case they put a little bit of a uh, cable on to support it here with a, uh, that's actually a fishing reel that was used. So hopefully most, <laughs> most people don't see that <laughs> just to make sure that it stays uh, horizontal. So what about uh, having this all stone and being slightly underground? I don't know if it's really underground, but it's all stone. How does that change the climate? Well, as you notice here, it's, uh, now in winter you come in and it's, it's quite temperate in here. It's, uh, the, the walls are so thick, there's uh, pretty much, uh, they knew what they were doing for keeping a steady year-round temperature or the wine to mature as naturally as possible. And inversely, when you come here in the summer, people ask, <laughs> some people ask, ask me, do we have uh, air conditioning in here? And the that's that they probably had. due to the thickness of the walls yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, you can see, as I said, about a meter here, another meter on this side. And yeah, you're talking about it being the, the street goes up this way. So we're, we're probably more underground on this side. Maybe the, the street level's up about here. And the street level's a lot lower on this side because we're on a slope. So yeah, we're semi, <laughs> semi troglodytic. <laughs> uh, again, it's a more stone vault. As you can see the doorway was this side, the steps came down. And there was a little bit of a recess here, but it came through the middle of the old doorway. So again, we didn't want to seal up too much. So we just put in some shelves here. And you may have noticed a recess in here. This was a natural system where they collected all the rainwater from the roof and there's at least a 10 cubic meters of a rock cistern in there. You can see the old hinges on there where the original door would have been. It would have been maybe another 50, 60 centimeters down. So we didn't want to totally condemn it. So we, we kind of cheated a little bit and we finally squeezed the washing machine in there. But uh, the, all the houses as well had all these stone uh, cisterns. Uh, for collecting rainwater, which is so precious because the, the stone, the rock around here is all uh, limestone and which is very porous and the, the, the water just drips right through it. So they, the key to survival here was water. So there's another small window on this side with the protection on it. Uh, they call this a strip of cat. Uh, it was uh, something for, <laughs> for her apparently punishing cats if they tried to get into your wine cellar. When you come to this side of the road, we're on the part of the village that would have been uh, fortifications. So you can see the, the building so much bigger because we're again built on the slope, on the slant. And uh, with the underground part of the house again, the, the vaulted uh, cellar. Uh, I don't know what were they reinforced uh, underneath, but it was, uh, was a pretty sharp drop down there. So yeah, it's a kind of a natural fortification or a, naturally de a natural site that could be pretty easily defended. There's a path that goes along here. This would have been uh, what they called uh, in Drey, the old uh, path that the, that the sheep uh, used to go down to the pasture. Uh, the, it's still in use today with two sheep farms in the village. I'm going down this. Oh, that little guy over there. Yep, that's next. And yes. Okay, I'm going down. You can know what, guy? This might lead to a really cool place. There's a, just a 45 minute, uh, a nice little walk that you can do and going through the cherry tree orchards. So before there was a lot of grape growing for wines around here. There still is, but there was the phylloxera disease uh, maybe about a cent, hundred, over a hundred years ago. That kind of wiped out a lot of the, the vines. Fruit trees gradually came to place, the vines, and the Tarn Valley here uh, has now become really well known for, especially for cherry and plums. In fact, next door here we have the Cherry Museum. The good news is that they built a, a cherry museum to promote the use of cherries. The bad news is this was all done before we moved in. That's our house up there. <laughs> and we used to have a window at the kitchen, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately they decided to put the roof just at that level. So our window was sealed off. Oh, 
And this is a panel explaining all the cherry trees that you can find up in the conservatoire. They tried to conserve all the rare varieties of cherry trees uh, that were uh, almost near, near an extinction. And uh, all those trees were uh, sponsored by a kid in the village. So the, the, the trees are there today. That was 20 years ago. And uh, they all bear the name of uh, one, of the, one of the locals. And you can see the, the original entrance, uh, the gateway here, uh, coming into the, the fortified village. All these houses that run along there, you can see, imagine that would have been, again, part of the walls. Uh, part of the fortifications of, of the village. Uh, again, with all the vaulted cellars everywhere <laughs> underneath. And here, so we, we come into the village. Some of the buildings are intact, but a couple of them have been demolished and it has opened up the, the space and made a kind of a village square called Place de l'Escaras. The Escaras is the symbolic tool that they use for the cherry tree farmers. The wood is so rare here. When they made ladders to go up and pick the cherries from the trees, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't afford to have a, a ladder with two sides. So it has just a, a single beam running here and a, a tool for just putting a hole through there. And they, they put the rungs through the hole like this. So I suppose they could have had maybe two ladders for the price of one. Uh, they, they kind of been more ecological with their wood that way. And the bottom of this pivots to adapt to the natural inclination of the hills and the fields. It looks pretty scary, but they're, they're, they're surprisingly stable and, and secure. And that's the entrance to the museum, which unfortunately is closed, but the shop with all, over 50 cherry-based products. Nice town. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're happy here. It's been 15 years, so hopefully more. Yeah, it's, it's quiet, as you can see, but uh, it's a nice, a nice place to be. Quality of life here is pretty good. Uh, so sometimes we, we go off uh, on vacation in the summer. We, it's kind of half-heartedly because there's so much going on here. Yeah. We'd rather stay around here and, and make the most of it. Do you want to come in and see what would have been the original entrance into the house? It's surprisingly big inside because it's, it's, it has an open courtyard. You get an idea of the, the size of the building with the pigeon loft at the top, which was a real claim to nobility at the time. There was actually was a chapel up in there as well, the, so the lord of the village. But where I live, it's just the, the farmer's house. And the farmer, he came to work uh, through this little tunnel. Yeah. Or they, they call it a, a calade. They decide to renovate a little bit with uh, uh, some stone just to make it as... Uh, <laughs> Oh, we, unfortunately, I'm sorry, we covered up the stone here, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye!